So a number of people here after a um, long and intellectually stimul stimulating day have just decided to take a vacation. Uh, you saw this word appear gender and you thought, oh, this one doesn't apply to me. I can take a little break. <laughs> Maybe you're a man and you think gender applies to women, forgetting that you have a gender too. Uh, or maybe um, you think it doesn't apply to your area of economics. Or maybe you think we live in a gender-free society. So I've got eight minutes to convince you that if you're doing good economics, you're already a gender radical. And if you want to continue doing good economics, you do better to think more about gender. I want to start with um, a statement that was actually up on this screen earlier today and a question. This is on the second page of your program book. It's the vision statement for YSI. I cut and pasted it out of the, the PDF of the program. Okay. Here's the question. Why isn't economics already free of intellectual barriers? Why haven't we always resonated with reality and served global society? And I'm going to suggest that a good part of this reason has to do with gender. Now, we often think of gender in the social realm. Okay? Uh, it actually also functions in the cognitive realm. Uh, psychologists have shown that gender associations are one of the strongest ways that we perceive and categorize our world. Our brain organizes things by gender. Uh, take, for example, cats and dogs. Do they have gender connotations? In dominant English-speaking Western societies, dogs are considered more masculine, cats more feminine. Is there any particular reason for that? You know, if you think hard, no, there isn't. Uh, what about pink and blue? Colors, okay? We categorize these things. <coughs> um, this kind of gender uh, in our brain can often come in handy. It's one of the ways we process information and keep it from overwhelming us. But it can also cause exactly the kind of intellectual barriers referred to in the vision statement. And let me illustrate this by, by starting by thinking about a few of the main characteristics of orthodox economics. Uh, particularly it's the definition models and methods. One of the biggest definitions, if you had to go to the core of it, is that economics is essentially about markets. And these markets are often thought of as functioning fu uh, primarily mechanically according to universal uh, principles and laws. The agents in these markets are economic man. Economic man is autonomous, rational, and self-interested. And we as economists imagine ourselves to be detached observers of economic life, able to come to certain and reliable and rigorous knowledge by strict use of our quantitative methods. Now, what did the YSI statement talk about that's left out here? It talked about uh, being engaged, uh, serving global society. Well, society is about our relationships with each other in families, in communities, in workplaces, in marketplaces. Uh, it talks about, uh, talked about reality, that reality has to include uh, nature, uh, our actual bodies, and our reliance on the natural environment. Talks about service. Service? Oh, you mean we should actually care about other people? Uh, care about the future? That's, that's news, okay? Uh, compared to the earlier uh, slide. It talks about a uh, resonance uh, with reality. You only resonate if you're in some way connected to that reality. We don't see ourselves as off there in space somewhere observing the economy. We are part of the economy. We're connected. We're tied in. Um, and uh, to be free of intellectual barriers means to be open-minded. Open-minded about the fact that sometimes we're not going to be able to get to certain and clear knowledge open-minded about the kinds of methods we choose uh, to get, you know, whatever's going to be the most useful for addressing a problem. And that may include qualitative, narrative, uh, historical sorts of methods. Why has the orthodoxy been so hard to battle? Why does it still have so much power? 
Oh, dang, the colors didn't show up. The left side is supposed to be blue, the right side is supposed to be pink. <laughs> Not white and lavender. Uh, but the left side there has um, uh, all of the cultural connotations are about masculinity, hardness, rigor. Uh, all of the right side ones are culturally associated with femininity. And the orthodoxy has been able to say, well, the left side is rigorous and hard. If you deviate from this, you are being feminine, you are being soft, and you are being weak. Okay. So how are we going to uh, uh, get past that? So, I mean, actually, before we get go to the getting past, so the uh, sexism in economics um, has many manifestations. The one that's getting most attention now is the blatant sexism in uh, economic job markets rumors, okay, actual harassment. Uh, but this goes much deeper. There's a whole history in Western Enlightenment thought of making the things that are associated with men and masculinity uh, be considered worthy and central, and things associated with uh, women and femininity are marginalized and uh, denigrated. So how can we break with this? Let me first talk about three ways of breaking with this that I don't think work very well. One is to pick and choose. For example, to try some new topics as new economic thinking, but stay rigidly within uh, the narrow confines of prescribed methods. That's not going to get us very far. Another one that you'll sometimes see is, let's just flip. The, uh, you know, men have gotten us in a lot of trouble. All of that stuff on the left is wrong. Let's go completely over to the right-hand side and just talk about uh, service and society and uh, forget about quantitative methods. No, they're evil. Um, I sometimes heard that kind of attitude, which is a little, little weird. Um, a third one is to confuse cultural gender associations. And that's what this is about. It's about cultural and cognitive gender associations with actual men and women. So that some people will end up thinking, well, men have certain characteristics that make them do that kind of economics, and women have characteristics that make them do some other kind of economics. And maybe if you're queer, you do some third kind of economics, OK? Um, but that's all of those solutions are playing, like playing a game of cards with half a deck. It's not going to work very well. Okay? If we want to do get good economics, we need to play with a full deck. We all need to use all of the resources uh, that we can to address the problems uh, of this world. Uh, in my Sunday talk, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm giving a plenary then. I'll talk about some uh, uh, more specific and concrete examples about how gender bias can really make us pretty stupid. Okay? Um, so that will come up uh, later. But playing with a full deck, one of the first things I think we need to do is get away from a definition of, market, of economics that's all about markets uh, or rational choice. Oops, you know, oops. I, uh, let me get back to that last thought in a minute because I forgot about a part. I was going to give you an example of getting past this dualism uh, having to do with methods. And that is um, economists tend to pride ourselves on our precise and elegant uh, 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 models particularly the formal models. And I'm not going to get up and advocate being imprecise and messy. That's not what you want to aim for. But if precision and elegance uh, in your modeling is the only thing you aim for, you're going to neglect the kind of, oops, sorry, I was looking for the button, uh, richness and realism that comes from more concrete, more detailed, and more engaged kinds of analysis. So if all you're aiming for is precision and elegance, you're probably going to end up with a model that's thin and unrealistic. What we really need is to aim for both of those uh, things, even if the richness and realism has a more feminine connotation. OK, so back to how we get to uh, the uh, full deck. I said one of the things we need is a new definition. This is one that I like. When we think of economics in terms of provisioning, that allows us to recognize and seriously address issues of uh, the, for example, the contribution of unpaid labor in families and communities, uh, its economic value. It allows us to recognize and address uh, problems of our rapidly degrading natural environment and our dependence on that. It allows us to recognize and investigate uh, the actual social relationships that go on inside realms uh, traditionally considered economic, such as business and markets. Those are actually social entities as well. 
And in order to play with a full deck, we also need to respect women as economists and as leaders. So the world needs a full-fledged economics. The world needs YSI, and the world needs you.